Artificial intelligence changing the automotive industry with many car companies jumping on the AI bandwagon. A recent AAA survey shows 68% of drivers are afraid of autonomous vehicles, up from 55% last year. Joining us right now from Car Coach Reports, Lauren Fix. Lauren, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Great to see you. Do you agree with that? And why do you think Americans may be hesitant and afraid of self-driving cars? I think there's a lot of things to be concerned about. People don't want to get in a vehicle and see no steering wheel and no pedals, which some of the manufacturers have talked about once we reach level five autonomous. And I think there's a lot of confusion. I think this is the problem. You know, you see Tesla saying, oh, we've got autopilot. You, you can just have a sandwich behind the steering wheel. And the truth of that is, that is not autonomous driving. What really we're at is level two of five different levels, zero being there's nothing. One is like lane change departure, we've all seen that. And level two is where we are today. Every vehicle on the road, whether it's Super Cruise, Blue Cruise, Autopilot, whatever it is, Pro Pilot Assist is all level two. So imagine what level five is like. You get in a vehicle and it's uh, self-driving. And they've been testing this with Uber. And I had a, a friend of mine out of Detroit who said, I, I got to get in this car and try this Uber self-driving. And it started raining in San Francisco. The vehicle pulled over, four ways went on, and it said, waiting for a human driver to arrive. Wow. So even that didn't work. So weather is a, a huge factor as well as hacking. But I think there's a lot of confusion with consumers because they really don't understand what manufacturers are selling because of all these three-letter acronyms and four-letter acronyms that just make it more frustrating. Well, this AI incident database is projecting 180 self-driving car accidents this year. So who's at fault yeah. for the accidents, Lauren? That's the insurance company and the reinsurance companies. Mm -hmm. They are absolutely against self-driving cars. And the reason for that is there's an accident. Is it your fault, Maria? Is it my fault? Is it the fault of the software, the fault of the car manufacturer? It just opens up a huge can of worms. And this is gonna be a big problem because it's easy to override. It, the thing is when a human drives the car, you know that human's at fault. But remember, we still got hackers involved. Could you imagine being in a self-driving car and it gets hacked, the system gets hacked? We've got a problem because then you've got a lot of people at fault and you still don't know who caused the problem. Mitch. So, Lauren, good, good to see you, Mitch Rochelle. I just drove back from Florida to New York, and I have a SUV that has lane departure alerts. And guess what? Yeah. It failed. And when I figured <laughs> it out and I took it to the dealership, they said it was a software problem, and they don't have the software patch yet. So how are, yeah. how are these companies possibly going to stay on top of all the software uh, updates that are needed and to get all those cars back? It used to be when there was a recall because there was something, it was mechanical and you could deal with it. But when it's software, how do you deal with it? Right. You're correct, Mitch. And, and I have done that drive from Florida to New York many, many times. And I'll tell you, you really do need your lane departure warning. So when it doesn't work, typically on the older cars, that means it would have to be done at the dealer. On the newer vehicles, it's an automatic software download. Uh, every brand is starting to put that into their cars from Kia to Ford. And that's going to be helpful getting that software patch in place. In the meantime, you could find yourself thinking, well, I wasn't warned. I changed lanes and now you have an accident. Again, do you blame the software company is it the car manufacturer's fault or is it your fault? Well, so to be, in this to be case, clear, my wife you're blames driving, me. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I mean, the other thing is, I mean, can bad actors get their hands on it and you know drive your car to somewhere yes. you don't want to go? I mean, are, are there security right. risks here? And also, give us the benefits of yes. self-driving cars. Why would we want one of these anyway? Well, to answer your first question, yes, there is a serious problem with potential hacking. No manufacturer, even the government, can't seem to find a way to perfectly keep all the bad actors out. So that is a huge problem. On the other side of this, there is some good things. At ADAS, which is a, a driver assistance systems, again, more three and four letter acronyms, if they could get to a consistency of, this is lane change departure, cross traffic alert, uh, forward collision warning, emergency braking, all of this makes the roads safer because you may not be paying attention for whatever reason, talking to someone or distraction, this will make you safer on the road. So a lot of this level two autonomous features, especially like Super Cruise and Pro Pilot Assist, are fabulous for making the road safer. They should lower your insurance rates as well. But if you don't know how they work, it's your responsibility to go to the dealer and say, 
I don't know what we're talking about here. Could you explain this to me? And then it will make it easier. But until they're all on the same page with the same three-letter acronyms, it's just confusing to customers. Real quick, Mark. Yeah, when it comes to the ADAS systems and, and chips out there, mm -hmm. who, who's doing it better than than the other than, than their competition? Because you know, Mitch mentioned his his lane change thing failed. Mine works mm -hmm. and it's god awful so mm -hmm. if i'm trying to swerve around a bicycle list it slams on the brakes and tries yeah. pulling me back in so i'm wondering who has the better adas out there well that's an interesting question i would say right now the only company that's working on level three autonomous is mercedes-benz their systems are pretty much state-of-the-art um, I would say, say that Ford and General Motors are also doing a really good job. But I will tell you, okay. some of those are very invasive. I don't like this aggressive uh, pushing you back in the lane, but you can shut that off in many vehicles, and then they're not working. So I, it's a six or a half dozen of another. Lauren, thanks very much. Good to see you. Lauren Fix.